Danny Wedding with the Missouri Regional FAS Training Center Project, also known as Mr. Fastic. And uh, Keely Cook is with me today, and Keely and I have become good friends over the, the past two years. We've been working on this project, and, and Keely, I appreciate you coming out. Oh, thank you very much for having me. Keely is a physician's assistant working with St. Louis University. And, and I guess I'm, I'm interested, in Keely, in, in how you first came to join the project. Um, the way I first came to join the project actually was uh, the private investigator, Dr. Mangle, um, uh -huh. who certainly has become a good friend of all of ours, too, I, I think, um, called my department at St. Louis University, the physician uh -huh. assistant department, requesting um, a name of somebody that might have some area of expertise in this yeah. field, um, either women's health or pediatrics. Um, the person uh, in our department happened to be me, so uh -huh. um, certainly I got volunteered for this project, but at the same time, my interest was certainly very great because I work in a women's health clinic one uh -huh. day a week at a university in Illinois. So yeah. luckily for me, it turned out to be um, a great fit. Um, not only did I have a little area of expertise, but I can also utilize these um, this information that we're learning, uh, that I'm learning a lot more about in my clinic okay. um, every week. Well, you've been a great addition to the team, and, well, and you're you. universally loved by your colleagues. Thank you very much. That's very nice. Do you identify alcoholism as your own specialty area? Or? I really identify women's health as my specialty area. However, oh. again, when we talk about women's health, certainly screening for alcohol use is mm -hmm. such a critical part of taking care of women. So. Well, well, Keely, as a physician's assistant, how do you uh, incorporate screening into your practice? Pretty much what we do, and again, I've worked in a number of different uh, practices. Um, mm -hmm. For the past three years, I've been at a student health clinic at a university in Illinois. Um, right. So it, it's kind of multifold, actually, because when, when I see patients, they've already, um, during their intake interview, their medical history form, filled out a form that will let me know whether they drink or not. We just have a very basic question. Okay. Do you drink alcohol? Sure. And they mark yes or no. Um, if they mark no, I actually kind of double check them one time and just sort of as part of the history say, oh, do you smoke, do you drink, you know, basic questions that we ask everyone. Um, if the answer is still no, pretty much don't do anything else. If the answer to that is yes, then certainly quantifying it is important. Uh -huh. And knowing whether they use effective methods of birth control, whether they're planning on getting pregnant, um, their educational level as to whether they know alcohol is um, harmful to a fetus. Um, so then if the answer is yes to that question, I'll use specialized screening instruments from there to help me assess whether they have a, a problem with drinking. Some of the tools that we talk about in the Mr. Fastic campaign. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Do you have a favorite tool or one you use um, probably, more than others? Probably my favorite tool is the Tweak tool, okay. um, the T-W-E-A-K tool, um, basically because it can be learned by anybody mm -hmm. with no special training. Um, takes five minutes at the most to administer. It's only five questions long. Um, the acronym kind of helps everybody know what those questions are, yeah. so it's not very difficult to, to remember what they are. Uh -huh. um, so again, and, and they're very basic questions, so my patients don't seem to be offended, and I mm -hmm. let them know ahead of time I ask every one of my patients these questions. Um, which is pretty much true. Um, in a university yeah. setting, pretty much everybody drinks a little bit. So okay. um, pretty much everybody gets that screening questionnaire. Performed. So your patients aren't offended when you ask if they drink? No, it's actually very interesting because most of my patients actually laugh when I ask them about alcohol wow. intake because they already know probably their intake is a little on the high side. So yeah. actually, they're extremely cooperative. Uh, if anything, they're much more on the side of not being concerned about their alcohol intake than being afraid to tell me about their alcohol intake. I know, I know, Keely, a lot of my physician friends and PA friends have complained that with managed care, they're forced to see more and more patients in less and less time. And I'd always thought that, that screening about things like alcohol use would be one of the first things to go. The screening itself takes so little time. The okay. screening for alcohol use, again, if you were really crunched for time, which luckily I have the um, advantage in the university setting not to be terribly crunched for time, which is, uh -huh. is very nice because yeah. I have a half hour with my patients, which is very unusual mm -hmm. nowadays. But in a, a, a practice where you're getting 10 to 15 minutes with a patient, you can take literally less than five minutes to screen them for alcohol use, even using a a specialized tool mm -hmm. but again in a busy practice easily a question just on alcohol use could be sure. incorporated without any time 
Okay. They can do that in the waiting room. You can assess it and ask three or four other questions. And you know, the difficult part is what do you do if you do feel like they have the alcohol sure. problem? Right. I'm certain. What do you do if you feel like there's a problem? You know, if I do um, a screening questionnaire and, a pa and a, one of my patients does seem to have um, a higher level of alcohol intake that I'm comfortable with, and again, mm -hmm. that's very dependent on whether they're trying to get pregnant or even if they're not trying to get pregnant, are they taking precautions not to get pregnant, two right. very different things. Um, then what I will normally do is what we call a brief intervention, which uh -huh. really, again, even in a time crunch, five to ten minutes maximum amount of time to do a brief intervention where we uh -huh. assess with them, ask questions, um, assess their level of alcohol intake, advise them to cut down. Um, all of that still, again, can be done really in any busy practice. Okay. Well, that's encouraging. Are, th there must be some uh, barriers to screening that... Certainly, certainly there are some barriers, and I feel that um, certainly being an, an, an expert in the field of women's health, certainly I've encountered this often. If you're in um, a setting where maybe that is not your field, <clears throat> however, women are not solely the ones with alcohol problems, truthfully, so everybody should be screening ideally. Um, a lot of people don't feel they know what to do, how to ask the questions what tools to use or if they have sure. to use a specialized tool. They don't feel they've been adequately trained during their either medical school curriculum, physician assistant curriculum, nurse practitioner cu curriculum. So very often it's the, it's the practitioner not feeling like they have the expertise to ask the questions or not only ask the questions, what do they do if they get an answer of yes to, I may have a problem with drinking. Yeah. Um, time, as you already mentioned, certainly sure. can be a barrier, and that is a bit of a problem, but I think we can learn to streamline that in this, in this uh, era, era of managed care. So if a woman <clears throat> says, yes, I, I uh, realized I just recently became pregnant, and, and I'm, I'm uh, embarrassed to admit this, but I, I have been drinking. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been drinking heavily. In fact, I, I stopped once I realized mm -hmm. I was pregnant, but mm -hmm. I was uh, drinking pretty hard before that. Right. What do you do? That is a very difficult issue because probably 60% of women may actually not know they are pregnant up until the fourth week of gestation or so. Yeah. That is very common. Unless you were planning the pregnancy very often, it's four weeks in before you know that. So okay. you know, one of the things we want to do is reassure them that it's great that they know they're pregnant now and are asking wow. the questions and then certainly the encouragement to um, abstain from alcohol 100% at that time. Letting them know that potentially there could have been damage from alcohol intake during that four weeks, but mm -hmm. what's past is past. We can't deal with that. We deal with the future. From now on, you have the information, abstain from alcohol, best chance for the fetus to be born without fetal alcohol syndrome. Um, ideally, what we really try to do is start talking about preconceptual counseling. Yeah. Um, or more importantly, for example, where I am in a women's health care setting dealing with college age students, they're not thinking about becoming pregnant. They just are not using effective methods of birth control. Yeah. Or the next level is they're drinking alcohol, which somewhat impairs their judgment at times. Uh -huh. So even if they 90% of the time use effective methods of contraception, when they've had five or six drinks, they forget to use, utilize the tools that they have to prevent pregnancy. So we really, really need to be educating women on using effective methods of birth control yeah. and or abstaining, period, so that they don't risk that first four weeks of not knowing they're pregnant and having alcohol intake. But if a woman who's sexually active is, is uh, not uh, taking effective methods of birth control, then she really needs to be uh, avoiding alcohol. Yes, then our advice is to abstain 100%. Okay. If she's using effective methods of birth <clears throat> control, then we we would give the same instructions we would give to any other individual, which is to try to drink at a low risk level. Sure. Okay. You know, that's very important. But certainly women who are not using effective methods of birth control are in a different category and they become high risk, okay. period. Great. Have you ever had a patient get angry with you for asking about their drinking? Um, I don't really think angry. Um, I think sometimes offended that I would ask. I mean, uh -huh. that has happened before. Not so much yeah. angry. Um, usually it's either um, more so I would say denial. 
Um, yeah. I may say, well, how much do you drink? And I had a patient a few weeks ago, and she said, well, I drink quite a bit. Didn't really want to tell me how much she drank. I said, well, uh -huh. could you quantify it for me? How much, yeah. how much per day do you drink, or how many days a week do you drink? And the more uh -huh. questions I asked, the more vague she got, because she just knew that she was drinking way too much and did yeah. not want to be honest with me. In a case like that, do you pull back? or? You know, what I really try to do is, is reassure them that I'm not there to judge them, that uh -huh. I am just there um, to help them become healthy yeah. so that part of my job is to be able to know what risk you're putting yourself at. So I really try to just say, you know, I realize, you know, that you're, you're a little hesitant to tell me these things, but this information is very confidential. All I want to do is quantify what we may need to do from here about this. And you know that patient that I mentioned, she calmed down, started telling me exactly how much she drank. Yeah. We started talking about what to do to try to cut down a little bit, and she was more than agreeable to do that. Okay. Do you feel that in your own training as a physician's assistant that you were um, well trained in the, uh, the effects of, of alcohol during pregnancy? That's a very interesting question and I think across the board with medical professionals in general we probably all feel like we were not trained terribly well yeah. um, for something as specific as fetal alcohol syndrome. Uh -huh. um, tobacco use has gotten a lot of press over the, the years. Yeah. Alcohol use probably a little bit less when it comes to pregnancy. Um, there are still probably 50 percent of OBGYN textbooks that um, may even say, well, we don't know, maybe a drink is okay. Yeah. Um, so even some textbooks still say that. Um, many uh, practitioners still do not advise 100% abstention from alcohol during pregnancy. So That's shocking, though, because this information has been out there for 30 years and practice still hasn't caught up with the best science. It's very shocking, and again, unfortunately, if it doesn't get incorporated into the curriculum, of those particular practitioners, it will probably be lost out in practice because certainly that's where we get our core basis of information. Now again, we should all be keeping up with the latest, sure. with the latest information, but that, that certainly, um, if it's ingrained in us as students, it yeah. pretty much sticks with us. Well, as you know very well, one of the goals of the Mr. Fastic program is to introduce this information into health professions training and into the curricula mm -hmm. of health profession schools. Right, and I think certainly twofold, that's very important, certainly we'll get it into the curriculum and people will know more about it as they graduate as PAs, as nurse practitioners, as physicians. Um, yeah but also that we are going to get out there and train the physicians who have already graduated, the yeah. practitioners that have already graduated who are taking care of patients right sure. now. Continuing education is a big part of the program that we're exactly. promulgating. Exactly. Okay. If you um, had a, a message to give to, uh, to women who are uh, drinking and, and possibly at risk for uh, pregnancy, is there a take-home message for those folks? Certainly, I think the take-home message for women in general is um, I initially low risk drinking, meaning yeah. ideally less than two to three drinks per week mm -hmm. and no more than um, one or two drinks per occasion. That's certainly very important. Okay. Um, if a woman is planning on becoming pregnant or not using effective methods of birth control, then abstinence is, is absolutely advised. Yeah. Uh, so I think the take home message for the women on the, on the end of the patient is that I need to be very careful about not getting pregnant. If I'm at risk to get pregnant, I need to abstain. If I'm not thinking about getting pregnant, my alcohol intake still needs to be fairly low for my overall health because there's certainly other health implications that this project doesn't deal with sure. in regards to alcohol. Yeah. Um, you know, interestingly on the practitioner side, what we really need to be doing is all women of childbearing age need to be screened for alcohol use. For us to prevent what we're most concerned about here, which is fetal alcohol sure. syndrome. In general, um, not even saying fetal alcohol syndrome, all women should be screened for alcohol, as should all men. Okay. Um, but in terms of our project, certainly all women of childbearing age absolutely should be screened for alcohol yeah. use. It seems unfortunate in our society that, that sexuality and alcohol are so closely linked. And what do you do on a date? Well, you go to a bar and, mm -hmm. and you, you get loaded with mm -hmm. your friends. Mm -hmm. that, that's... And then you go home and don't use any effective methods of birth sure. control if it goes farther than that. <laughs> because your judgment's been impaired. Yes, exactly. Gee. 
Well, well, Keely, you're sort of the spokesperson on the team for um, physician assistants and for nurse practitioners mm -hmm. and, and for other uh, non-physician groups. And I'd like to give you a chance to address your colleagues and, and uh, give them any closing thoughts you have about this, this, this topic and this problem. Sure. You know, I think if I was going to address my, my colleagues, my mid-level practitioner colleagues, certainly I think the most important issue here is to incorporate into your practice setting some method of alcohol screening. Again, that can be a checkoff form that the patient at least checks off whether they have alcohol intake or not. So most important is to screen. Second of all is to get out there and learn a little bit about what to do if somebody screens at higher risk. Um, this thing called brief intervention is really a fairly easy, um, not very time consuming way to really help women cut down on their alcohol intake, whether or not they're considering pregnancy. And I think, again, um, to get that training, certainly you know, our project here is going to get, get out into the field and train other practitioners. Um, this CD-ROM hopefully will help educate people on the effects of alcohol and pregnancy, which is very important. So I think, again, screening and then brief intervention is the most important thing I can um, express to all of my mid-level practitioners as being very important to help prevent this devastating disease. Keely, it's been a joy having you as a colleague, and thank you for coming out today. Thank you, Danny, very much. Thank you.